I'm Julie Heath, and I'm Associate Professor in the Department of Biological Sciences at Boise State. I study the impacts of global change on bird populations, and so we try to understand how birds are responding to human activities or human-driven environmental change by looking at the effects of change on behavior and physiology and how that translates from changes in the individual bird to changes in the population. Today what we're doing is going out to capture adult American kestrels that are nesting in nest boxes that were put up in southern Ada County about 25 years ago. And ourselves and a crew from USGS have been monitoring this population for over 20 years. And that's really led to a lot of interesting insights about long-term population changes. Probably the two main areas of research with the kestrel population for our lab has been changes in land use and that effect on populations, and then also climate change and how that has affected kestrel populations. So some of our first work was looking at how kestrels respond to traffic and road conditions and human disturbance because this area over time, over the past 20 years, has become more and more developed and populated. And many of our nest boxes were along roadsides. And so we were looking at how does the traffic and the noise affect the birds while they're in the nest box. And we found that the birds that are nesting near very developed areas or really heavily trafficked roads had the female birds had higher corticosterone, which is a stress hormone, and those birds were most likely to abandon their nests compared to birds that were nesting further away from high traffic areas or highly developed areas. And then secondly, some of the work we're doing now is looking at how changes in the winter and our winter climate have affected when the birds breed. And so over the past 20 years, the kestrels have changed the timing of their breeding. And it has become earlier by almost about a month. We think that's because the birds who spend the winter here don't have any costs or any energetic costs associated with migration or having a severe winter. And so we're trying to understand how does where the birds spend the winter affect when it nests. So one of the things we're doing is recapturing individuals that we've captured in the winter or birds that we've captured in previous nesting seasons. And then we are tracking when are they nesting and how successful are they at nesting. And then we're also applying light sensing units called geolocators that record light levels with a time and date stamp. And from that information, you can determine latitude and longitude. So we put these units on the bird's back and then we capture them a year later, and we can see did this bird migrate or did it stay in the area. We ban the birds with uh, federal bands, but we also use field readable color bands. And what that means is we put the orange bands with the really large letters on, and, and that way we can essentially recite that bird and know who it is without capturing it again. We collect a lot of different morphological measurements because morphology is one of the things that can be affected or change with different migration strategies. So we track the sizes of the birds and the shapes of their bodies. The raptor biology program at Boise State is unique in that it's the only program focused on raptors. Raptors are indicative of environmental change. And with all the types of global change that are going on, this means results from raptor biology research at Boise State will have far-reaching implications across the globe and also in Idaho and Boise.